the study of the Bible, number 11. Today, and this is no real order right now, just as the subject came into be. Today, we're going to look at John Wycliffe, a very important person when it comes to looking at the Bible. Bible translator, reformer, priest, seminary professor at the University of Oxford. So, he's called the Morning Star of the Reformation period. And it's the Re Reformation true to the Pope 150 years before the Reformation period. So when we talk about John Wycliffe, now we're going to talk about his enemy. And we're going to look at the Roman Catholic Church. Now, this is very little information here in this report. I suggest to you as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, get yourself a couple biography, autobiographies, and read and at least look at the life of John Wycliffe. And Wycliffe was an advocate of translation of the Bible into the common tongue. He wanted everybody to be able to read it. In 1380, the New Testament was translated. In 1382, the Old Testament was translated. In 1382, the complete translation directly from the Vulgate into Middle English, a version known as the Wycliffe uh, Bible, and that's all he had. Oh, he's using a vote. That's all he had. And his reasoning is for, I want the common people. Wycliffe would not get in the pulpit today say, in the Hebrew, in the Greek. He would put it in the English, the Middle English. He wrote to popes against the Catholic Church and, and to which the Pope is the head. He wrote letters to the Pope. You're wrong. This is where you're wrong. You got today where everybody get ecumenical. That's, that's not John Wycliffe. Any Bible. That's not John Wycliffe. Wycliffe Bible appears to have been completed in 1384. Additional updates, versions being done by Wycliffe's assistant, John Purvey, P-U-R-V-E-Y, and others in 1388-1395. I'm giving you names, and I'm giving you the dates. Why is not this taught in your Baptist churches? We believe the King James Bible, the 1611 Bible, is the Word of God. Why? Where did it come from? Uh, a king? You got to put the vegetables back in the refrigerator and teach the truth of the Bible. You got to be teaching the Bible from the Bible and nothing extra. Every copy had to be done by hand. Gutenberg hadn't come up with this press yet. Imagine you having to take your 66 books of the Bible, from Genesis 1 to Revelation chapter 22, and you had to hand write. You know, the law prescribed for every king was to hand write his own law. Ten months, it took a well-scribe, a proper scribe, to complete one Bible. And the, the, the common Christian has a problem to read their Bible all the way through in one year. You want me to read it in one year? It took ten months for a proper scribe to write it out by hand. And then it was commonly dispersed. As hard it was to come up with one Bible, all right, give it to the common people. 
And we'll read about that in a moment. Give to the churches. And since few could afford to have their own handmade Bible, it was expensive. Wycliffe and his followers traveled countryside with Bible manuscripts for the people to read. They went out and traveled. Like the disciples went from Jerusalem, Samaria, all the parts of the world. Wycliffe and, and people went out with the manuscripts and say, here, this is the Bible. You can read it. And I, I would assume there would be copies of those manuscripts. They would make copies of those manuscripts. The word of God is getting out. And you find that in Acts chapter 10, the Ethiopian eunuch had a copy somehow of Isaiah 53. Here it is in the 1800s. Uh, no, 1300s, not 1800s. 1300s. Sometimes the people would borrow or rent the scriptures for a day. Ah, can you see that in the Laodicean church age today? I have met Sunday school teachers. Oh, I don't read the Bible. Oh, I don't read the Old Testament. These people in the 1300s, going into the 1400s, would borrow or rent for even an hour because they could not afford to buy a copy. And today you can get a free copy on the internet, your phone, an app. It is said that a load of hay was the going price to rent a Bible for an hour. Now, I don't know how much hay costs. I tried to find that out. But when you're talking about a load of hay or a uh, hay was the gasoline of the 1300s. You didn't have automobiles. It was your ass, your donkey, your horse, your mule. And they didn't get gasoline in octane. You didn't go to the gas. You gave them hay. So it would be like today, if we were to rent, it would be a gallon of gasoline or a tank full of gasoline. A tank full of gasoline, they would give up for the word of God. The word of God was more important than the gasoline. Hay was the food of horses, animals, livestock. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the word of God. Have you not uh, tasted and tried the word of God to see? Here, take this little book and eat it. I had, Job says, I have the word of God more than my necessary food. I can't quote that word. Nicholas Bellward, B-E-L-W-A-R-D, is one of the same sect, Lodivar, Lod, Lodard, D, and forgive me for getting these names wrong, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll look at that in the meaning. The sect, the Lordard, Lordardi, and have a New Testament which he brought to London for four marks and 40 pence. That's how much it costs. And taught the said William Wright and Marjorie, his wife, and brought with them the space of one year and studied diligently, I see that in the scriptures, upon the said New Testament. And that's found in Fox's Acts and Monuments. Now that 40 marks and 40 pence is said to be a yearly salary. You found a yearly salary be given, being paid out and being bought in the New Testament in the time of Jesus. Here's a person, they didn't go to seminary for one year. The seminary came to them and it, it valued a year's salary. The word of God. You go to the seminary today, they'll take many years of your salary and get you out of the word of God for the nonsense. I know many, many seminaries, seminaries, I won't name them, I should, I can, it's scriptural, that they go in as King James Bible believers and they come out with modern versions or complete denial of the word of God itself. I could do a whole lesson on that, but I'm not going to. 
to White Cliff followers were nicknamed Lollards. Lollard. L O L L. L O L L A R D S. And why don't you know that, Christian? Why don't you know about the Lollard? I may not be able to pronounce the name. I apologize. The Lollards oppose many practices of the Catholic Church. I'm a Lollard. I probably uh, oppose many more practices of the Roman Catholic Church. I came out of the Roman Catholic Church. April 25th, 1987, I met Jesus Christ. Not in the Catholic Church. They were street preachers. I'm a lollard. Daytona Beach here at the Farmer's Market on, on Mongolia Avenue and Wall Street, I street preach. I'm a lollard. This is my family. Now, here is a name of lollard, followers of Wycliffe, and I'm going to give you a name of, try and look at the Roman numerals. I'm going to give you 14 names. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Of Lollards, my family, that were burned, burned alive upon the faggots for the stance of following Wycliffe and a Bible in, the, in common language. <clears throat> William Sautre, S-A-W-T-R-E. John Badley, B-A-D-Y. Richard Termling, T-U-R-M-I-N-G. These names are probably, most likely, in glory. These names are better names than what you read in the newspaper, see on TV, and given trophies of, of Oscars and other crap. John Clayton, C-L-A-Y-D-O-N. William Taylor, he was a priest. The Catholic Church burned their own because their own got right with God. So don't believe that Catholic Church when they want to be friendly and nice to everybody. William White, Richard Hovden, H-O-V-D-E-N. These names are in the last book of life. Richard White, W-Y-C-H-E. Thomas Bangley, a priest. B-A-N-G-L-E-Y. Sir John Oldcastle. The first woman to be burned at the stake, Joanne Broughton, B-R-O-U-G-H-T-O-N, at Smithfield, 1494, with her daughter. Mother and daughter burned. Followers of Wycliffe, Lollards, for the Bible being in the common language. John Brewster, William Sweating, S-W-E-E-T-I-N-G, or Sweeting. James Rusby, R-E-S-B-Y. For the Word of God in the English, don't give me your Hebrew crap, don't give me your, your, your Greek cap crap. Give me the eight, uh, Webster's, 18, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The English. There are people who have lives have been burned at the stake. They have been tortured. They have been killed for the English Bible. Don't give me your Hebrew. Don't give me your Greek. Press one for English. And may each of these people I gave a name, may they come slap you in the face at the judgment seat of Christ in the Hebrew, in the Greek, or better render. May they slap you in the face. And I'll be over there. Then I'll clap. What's the importance of the English Bible? People have been burned alive for the English Bible. They believe that Jesus is the only mediator between God, not dead saints. The Roman Catholic Catechism, the Roman Council of Trent, calls you a napa if you don't believe. With regard to the Eucharist, Lollards such as John Wycliffe, William Thorpe, T-H-O-R-P-E, John Ocastle, so that, he, he, he was, Sir John Ocastle was burned, taught a view of a real presence of Christ in the Holy Communion known as consubstantiation or 
crap. Did not accept the doctrine of, of the crap mass. As taught by the Roman Catholic Church. They say that this wafer and this hoop juice. This alcohol is the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. And the followers of Lollards. And the followers of John Wycliffe. Who burned that to say. Say that is crap. About your mess and your another Jesus. Amen. I believe that too. Before the law, during the law, during the church age, and in the tribulation period, and in the millennial period, and in if there's any blood in the eternal life, it's forbidden, it's an abomination to eat blood in the scriptures. Including his Bible with Apocrypha. An epistle of Paul to the Laodiceans. Many Christians were burned to death with Whitecliffe Bible tied around their necks. So not only did they burn alive the followers of John, John Whitecliffe, but they also taken the Whitecliffe Bible that took 10 months to write by hand. They tied them Bibles to their necks. The Catholics tie a crucifix around their necks. Curses he that hangeth upon a tree. The followers of the English Bible and for the common people that were killed and burned had the Bible around their necks. The Bible is the foundation of the worship of God, not the music service. Not the fellowships and the fellowshipping. Not the program. It sure is not the VBS. VBS Bible, 10 to 15 minutes if you're lucky. Playtime, 10 to 15 minutes. Crafts, 20 minutes. Food and snacks, 30 minutes. Playground, 15 minutes. Awards, 15 minutes. Attendance, 5 minutes. Song and singing, 10 minutes. Games and contests, 15 minutes. That's an actual VBS that me and my family participated in in Ormond Beach, Florida. And that 10 to 15 minutes Bible time with little Jeffrey in this toy boat. Which is not in the Bible. With a couple scripture references. And then at the end of the VBS, they handed out perverted modern Bibles because they couldn't get free KJV Bibles. And when I stood up and said, hey, why are we giving away perverted Bibles? That's all we could get. These are people. There are people who think if they mow the lawns and clean the church house longer. They'll clean the church house. They'll mow the lawn longer than they will have their eyes in the pages of their Bible. I sat in the house one time, three people, four TVs, all on, three Bibles, one back seat of the car. Three people, four TVs, all the TVs are on, and three Bibles, and one of them Bibles was in the back seat of the car. I've seen Bibles fly off the bodies of automobiles after church, leaving the church house. I said church house. I didn't say the Lord's house. I've seen Bibles skim across the basketball court. At, you know, churches all run out and scream the, the, the Bibles right across the parking lot. I've heard many Christians say, I don't read my Bible. I've heard say, well, I don't read that portion of Scripture. I only read my Psalms. I've seen many profession Christians sit in church service with no Bible and not even having a Bible when the church provided a Bible. And I've heard many Christians, number 13, add to this list. I don't know where I'm, I couldn't find my Bible. I forgot my Bible. You didn't forget your underwear, did you? On December 25th, <laughs> 1384, Wycliffe was at a church in Lutonworth on December 28th when he had a stroke and collapsed. 
He had suffered a previous stroke a year or two before, and the second one proved fatal. He never spoke another word and died on the 31st. His body was buried at Luttonworth Churchward, where he remained until 1428. He died. 1384, his, 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 he was buried. And in 1428, he didn't have a resurrection by God. He was not raptured in 1428. But in 1428, by the orders of the Council of Constance, the Catholic Church, his body was dug up and burned. And the ashes were scattered in the nearby River Swift. 44 years later, the Catholic Church hated Wycliffe so much, 44 years later, they dug up his dead body and they burned his dead body and they threw the ashes into the river. They cremated it. They cremated his dead body. And you're going to have fellowship? You're going to get up there and say, in the Hebrew, in the Greek? You're a fool. They did not believe the church practices of baptism and confessional were needed for salvation. This is the Lollards. This is Wycliffe. Salvation had nothing of water imparted salvation. Catholics believe that water baptism is essential. It's a sacrament and baby sprinkling. Not the Lollards. They considered the Lollards and Wycliffe praying to saints and honoring of the images to be a form of idolatry. Aids to worship, praying the rosary was idolatry. Amen. Glory to you guys. They had a poor opinion of the trappings of the Catholic Church, which included, they, they had no respect to holy bread. I've heard of holy cheese, Swiss, holy water. You know what the holy water was in the Bible? There's, there's holy water in the Bible. When a man thought that his wife had committed adultery against him, holy water was determined used to determine if she did commit adultery against her husband and he, he couldn't prove it, it would make her belly to rot. Bells. Dinglings. And I, rem I, I remember that going to Catholic, and, you know, they, they ring the dinglings. Organs. And church buildings. Amen. Glory to God. I'm a lowlard. I believe in house churches. I don't believe in the house of the Lord, the house of God. Seventh century martyrologist, martyr uh, being killed, John Fox. Fox's Book of Mark. You got to read that one. Describe four main beliefs of the Lodardi, Lodars. Opposition to the pilgrimages, the saint worship, dead saints, denial of the doctrine of transification, that's the mass, I can't say it, and a demand for English translation of the scriptures and the, the <clears throat> the Catholics did not want the English translation of the Bible. The Catholics did not want the Bible in the common language. And you get people get up in the pulpit. The Hebrew says and the Greek says you're siding with the Catholic Church. Give me a Webster's 1828 dictionary. Press one for English. Again, December 28, 1384, he suffered a stroke and died as the year ended. There are 30 manuscripts of his still exist. They did not get the flames of the Catholic Church. He proclaimed, according to Revelation chapter 1, 
Every believer was a, I'm a priest. I offer up spiritual sacrifices, prayers. On the 22nd, May 1377, Pope Gregory XI sent five copies of a bull. That's a great name for the a, a, official Pope writings called the bull. I say that too. But I will go as far as say, not only is it bull, it's bull crap. That's the clean version. Pope Gregory sent five copies of a bull against Wycliffe. The man who wanted the Bible in English. The man who wanted the Bible for the common person. Dispatching one chancellor at the university. Among the enclosures were 18 theses of his, which were denounced as erroneous and dangerous to the church and state. The works and the writings of John Wycliffe in 1377 by Pope Gregory XI with his bullcrap is a danger to the Catholic Church. You know what a danger is to the Catholic Church? If you can get a Catholic to read the Bible, and I have, you can convert a Catholic when you show him the error of the church and their traditions versus to what the Bible says. Call no man your father. Well, you know, the Catholic Church has been around since Jesus Christ. I can show you the Catholic Church and I can show you a father named Priest hired in the book of Judges. And that's long before Jesus was born. You know, what I, you know how I try to deal with a Roman Catholic? I try to get him in the Bible. I try to show them simple Bible things. The Catholic Church says, don't get them in the Bible. Get them out of the Bible. Listen, we went one time, one of our ministries is, is, the, is the Christmas Eve service. We'll go there, we'll pass out gospel track, and we'll preach to the Catholics as they go for their midnight mass. We don't go inside. We're outside on the sidewalk. We had, not this year, because uh, medical reason. Last year, we had it, and we done it. And they put a garbage can out. And before they entered the building, every gospel tract we handed out was tossed into the garbage. It was taken out of the hands by, by, the, by the workers, by the, the church clergy of the Catholic Church here in Daytona Beach. It was removed out of their hands. And they, their own selves, took the word of God, the gospel tract, and threw it in the garbage. Well, brother, they couldn't take the preacher that started preaching and throw him in the garbage. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there with, with medical reasons. I, I plan to be there again, Lord willing. The Catholic Church does not want their people to read the Bible. And the Baptist Church wants the Hebrew and Greek down out of the English. When we have Webster's 1828 edition, we even have the Bible itself to give you definition. Wycliffe had come to regard the scriptures as the only reliable guide to truth about God. Paul writes to the Corinthian church saying that that person in the pulpit could be of Satan. Not everybody out of the pulpit is of God. The Bible says, you're the study to show thyself approved unto God. And maintain that all Christians should rely on the Bible rather than the teachings of the popes and clerics and clergy. He said that there was no scriptural justification for the popes or the prophecy. Amen. I'm a Wycliffe follower. And if they could, they'd probably put me on a faggot to burn me to death. And keeping with Wycliffe's belief in that scripture was the only authoritative, reliable guide to the truth about God, he became involved in efforts to translate the Bible into English. Press one. Webster's gave us the 1828 dictionary. 
while Wycliffe is credited, it is not possibly exactly to define his part in the translation, which was based on the Vulgate. That's all he had. There's still about 150 manuscripts, complete or partial. Now, I said there's 30 manuscripts that exist, totally, but there's 150 manuscripts, not complete, partial, con containing the translation in its revised form, changes. For this, one may easily infer how widely diffused it was in the 15th century. For this reason, Wycliffe's in England were often designated by their opponents as Bible men. I'm a Bible man. I never use the Hebrew and Greek. Now, there are places in the Bible where God gives me a Hebrew. There are places in the Bible where God gives me <coughs> the Greek. Other than that, God's given me an English Bible. God's given me an English dictionary. The Council of Constance declared Wycliffe a heretic on 4 May of 1415. 1452, 1492, Christopher Columbus did something with the ocean blue. And 1415 on May, the Council of the Catholic Church of Constance declared, banned his writings. What was his writing? The English Bible. Effectually, both excommunicating him, retroactively, excommunicating me because you're not of the one universal church, the Catholic Church. When you die, you're going to hell and you're going to suffer even hellish torment because you have blasphemed the Pope. You have blasphemed Mother Church. You are a heretic. And all the angels and God in heaven, good for you. He's the early forerunner of the Protestantism theory that would follow. The council decreed that Wycliffe's works should be burned and his bodily remains removed from consecrated ground, you know, the holy ground, the graveyard. The order confirmed by Pope Martin V was carried out in 1428. Wycliffe's corpse was exhumed and burned and his ashes cast into the River Swift, which flows through Lutterworth. They hated him so much, we got to bury, unbury him, we got to burn him and throw him in a river. We got to get rid of his ashes. And yet, the soul, the soul, a white cliff is in glory today, and one day when, when Jesus Christ has that angel blow that trump, the ashes of white cliff, wherever they are, and all the bodies of those that are born again and saved will be caught up together in the cloud to meet Jesus in the air. Glory to God. And I hope Wycliffe is one of them ones to go up to preachers and pastors and educated and all kinds of nonsense and smack them in the face for doing the Hebrew and the Greek. I hope he does. I don't like that. That's tough. God gave us the English Bible not to go back to the Hebrew and to the Greek. That's a very short, very condensed story of a wonderful man hated by one church. And loved by God. That has come to me. My King James Bible. Glory to God.